Welcome to part 6 of the Interactive Brokers Application Programmer Interface Tutorial by Tim Heath. In part 6 I show you how to purchase a stock at market pricing, not a limit order. To purchase a stock at market pricing we must use the place order API call from the instantiated e-client socket object. The parameters that must be supplied to the place order method are first the ticker ID. The ticker ID must be unique. We know how to make sure that the ticker ID is unique by working with the value that was sent to the next element ID when we called the eConnect method from the instantiated eClient socket object. Once we use this ID we must increment so when we make another request we will use a unique ID. The next parameter the place order method needs is a contract object. Then the place order method needs an order object. Once the place order method is called from our instantiated eClient socket object, order status will be sent to our main.java program via the eWrapper interface function order status as an event. Analyzing the order status eWrapper event slash method we see that we are sent 10 parameters. What is important to understand is that the actual stock name is not sent. To find the stock name we must store the stock name with the unique ID we sent when we invoked the place order method from our instantiated eClient socket object. By doing this we can easily look up what stock order status event goes to. I chose to use a Java hash map for this. The next field is the status field. Notice that in the example the order status is called twice. Once with pending submit, and then again with status submitted, and field populated. The rest of the fields are self-explanatory. Notice also that the transmit field is set to true on the order object. If it was set to false it would not actually go through to be executed. In this example Apple was bought 100 shares of Apple at an average fill price of Welcome to part 7 of the Interactive Brokers Application Programmer Interface Tutorial by Tim Heath. In part 7 I show you how sell a stock position. Notice that the portfolio inside of Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation shows 100 shares of Apple. What is kind of confusing is that the portfolio view of the Trader Workstation does now show the price the shares were purchased at, or the amount of money you would lose, or gain if you sold it at the current market price that is shown. The selling of stock is basically completely the same as buying a stock except you put sell string for the M action instead of BUI. I don't show the output as it is also the same with the order status even invoked with a pending submit status and then invoked again with a submitted status. Welcome to part 8 of the Interactive Brokers Application Programmer Interface Tutorial by Tim Heath. In part 8 I show you how to get the status of all open orders and your current portfolio. It obviously is important to understand this so you can create an effective strategy to sell or buy stock based on what is in your portfolio and your target gains or losses threshold. It is obviously important to know what open orders you have as well so you don't submit duplicate orders to buy or sell. This approach should always be taken when you first start up your program so that you don't make accidental actions because you don't know what you have in your portfolio etc. To find out your portfolio and open orders you must call the functions rec account updates and rec all open orders from the instantiated eClient socket object. The rec all open orders method will return information to the eWrapper methods open order and order status. The rec account updates method will return information to the eWrapper methods update account value, update portfolio, and update account time. 
The positions in the portfolio in this example has 100 stocks on Apple. This is shown when update portfolio is called with contract symbol APL, position of 100, market price of 119.0849914, market value of 11908.5 with an unrealized profit of 67.5. If this was negative it would be a loss of course. In a simple trading strategy analyzed the unrealized profit and loss for a particular stock symbol could be quite easy to implement. It is common to go into a stock position with an expected trading range for both buying and selling as appropriate. I hope these tutorials have been useful to you.